Hello everybody and welcome to this new live stream in the school management system series. Hope you're all doing well. Unfortunately I was not able to do the stream yesterday as I initially planned. Had quite some few very very busy days at work and I also went to the office. So I was kind of like very 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 tired and I really couldn't do this live stream. But Hope that you are all on board for today's live stream where we will grow our application further. So as we always do, you know the drill, please just say hi here and let me know where you are watching from. I see here already some people wrote something in the chat is Daniele, who is also one of the oldest members of the channel. So thank you very much for joining this one. Please also let me know if you can hear me well enough and if you can see me well enough. Last time out, there were some complaints, let's say complaints, that kind of like for some of you, the stream was a little bit buffering. So I played around a little bit with the bitrate and I'm trying to stream right now at a lower bitrate, which should probably allow for a better user experience, but theoretically this should decrease the quality of the video. So hopefully you can see well enough. So please let me know if everything on your screen is clear enough. For instance, if you can see the letters or what or the the names of the classes that we have here in solution explorer let me know if everything is okay from that point of view that would be highly appreciated also don't be shy don't be shy let me check if everything's okay but it seems to be okay Theoretically, it seems to be fine. Okay, Jason, doing good here. Thank you very much, Jason. Nice to have you back here. Also, we have Emmanuel. Hello, all good there watching from Ghana. Thank you very much for joining next week, basically. Ah, that's, that's also an announcement. Probably for the next two weeks, I won't be able to stream because I will have a well-deserved vacation. And for the very first time, I will get to see what I think it would be, or it is, the beautiful African continent. So it would be, for the first time there, I'm going to Tanzania. So not really in Ghana, but I think it's not really that, that far away. So, well, it's kind of like in the region, I would say. But yeah, for the next two weeks, I won't be streaming. But I will leave some videos prepared. So uh, probably I will just publish videos and uh, shorts that are pre-scheduled. So that will be on track for the channel. But for the live streams, we will need to make or take a break for two weeks. Okay, so Jason, as far as I recall, you are watching from Alaska. Is it as cold as last week? Okay, and Hassan Hadid, you said it's okay. I assume you were referring to the quality of the image. So yeah, let's maybe just chat for a few seconds more, for a few minutes more to wait for some other people here together. But I see maybe Wednesday is not a good day for streaming. So not a lot of people here, but there's obviously still time if you want to invite over some friends of yours or colleagues or people that you might think would find this useful, then please go ahead and invite them. We'll, we'll do some coding today, definitely. So we'll, we'll be fine with that. So maybe just let me know uh, what of the Code Wrinkles videos have you watched recently? And what did you think about it? Your feedback would be really highly appreciated here. Okay. Let me check once again, but everything seems to be just okay. Cool. Now, let's then move maybe over to our solution and let's try to figure out where we actually stopped last time. So I will run the application first. I literally didn't touch it till now. So it's the first time I touch it since the last live stream. Okay, this will start also my Docker for desktop, obviously. Only for the first time it runs, will it do this? And here's our Aspire dashboard and we have here the web application. Obviously I have to log in. Uh, was this my username? I guess yes. 
So since I didn't use the application, I'm not logged in anymore, but hopefully this is the correct password. Obviously it's a password, very weak password. So that's why I get this warning. So we have implemented uh, last time on these students. This will load basically the students from the database via the student service, which is a dedicated microservice for students. And here we have implemented this uh, manage. So if we click on manage, we go to this page and here on this page, actually this information here yeah, right now, this information, it also comes from the database. So I think, uh, or doesn't, yeah, it should, it should come from the database. I think it should come from the database. So we said that what we want to do this time is kind of like we want to try to start doing some updates on this student. And as I said, I have this preference for doing this kind of like task based or section based updates. So in order to avoid having one big update that kind of like needs to take care about all the different aspects, I, I re literally want to kind of like break it down in different sections that, that make sense and that, 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 that have a sense to change together. So that's why I have here an update button for this personal information. And then I have an update button for the relatives. Actually here for the relatives probably we'll have to change a little bit because we'll need to add relatives. Uh, but here probably we'll have to also get another service involved, which is the, well, a parent service or how, how should you call it? I guess something like this. And then we have this address that we can update. So I guess this is what we will take care about today. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's the current status obviously also the delete works on on the student so if you go the students the delete also works but since this is right now the only student i simply won't delete it and obviously the create student we have it from previously uh, let's give here yeah let's let's create a john doe yeah let's create john doe okay email at example.com is okay Okay, we need to to have here date. Let's have the year. That would be I don't know 2005. And uh, yeah, we need to give a password. Also a very very bad password. So save. Obviously, I got this information. Ah, and last time out, I remember we had this problem that the only thing that kind of like uh, happens is that okay, this student was not saved. Why was this student not saved? This was working last time. This was actually working last time. So that's a little bit strange. That's a little bit strange. Hmm. I don't have any exception here. Let us go to the Aspire dashboard and check a little bit our traces. So here on the traces we see, okay. These are the students. This is, I assume the get information or the gets that we try to do. once again a get hmm strange let's let's try once again let's try to create another student maybe I did forget something I don't know uh, okay let's create a, a student with my name okay okay let's give it also a password Let's have here a year, 2006. Let's use another day. Okay. Ah, now it worked. I, I don't know why, why it didn't work previously. And now kind of like also this, this type of thing worked because this uh, table was updated automatically. 
and last time out we had this problem that kind of like it didn't update automatically but now it did update so strange strange things happen but uh, yeah that's kind of like what we have here confirm form resubmission um i don't want to resubmit the form why okay and these are the roles on the roles we were kind of like previously here also we can add a role and delete a role so we have students let's go and manage yes it's from the database so it's exactly what we have done here also maybe some student information here we can write something about the student i guess this is not even supported yet in our application so this text is hard coded there and then uh, everything else seems to be fine i guess okay and then uh, address okay let me let me just close this because we don't need this anymore Let me check okay so let's go to the front end right now and check a little bit what what we have there for the students so we have this create student we have this manage student uh, the list student button manage student button and student list so manage student what what we have here we have these student details which uh okay authorize view so i can view this only if i'm authorized that's okay so if we don't have any student information then we display this loading but when we get this information from the database we actually have this uh, student details header which is the header and student details body which is obviously for the body and then uh, if we go in this one me check so what do we actually have here we have here the different sections and here we have these buttons uh, okay let me maybe move this on another line here we have this edit personal info details but i guess we just need to add that so i think we don't actually have it so far so that that is I, I want to actually open a model when i click on that button similarly to what happened or to what happens when um when we when we add a new student or when we want to create a new student so there's a new model that that's been opened uh okay so that's what i want to do uh edit personal details let me probably check here in the create student button and this is the create student model and uh yeah i think we just kind of like need to have these classes here basically on the model that we want to create and then everything kind of like uh yeah we'll have to to kind of like define for our steps but guys once again please don't forget i always like please get in touch with me let me know say hello let me know where you are watching from and let me know how you enjoy this stream and the code wrinkles channel in general please just just share something or if you have any questions or anything that you would like to discuss feel free to so hit the chat and ask your question or give your thought on something and I would be really really more than happy to get a conversation here. Remember that the last streams kind of like they were very very dynamic and you had a lot of things to say and I really appreciated that. So hopefully we can build upon that and, um, and continue like this also for this stream. Okay then um, Yeah, then probably let me just check once again if everything's okay, but it seems to be okay. Okay, so in this create student, then I guess I'll create a new component and this new component, obviously a razor component, and I will call this um, edit or update personal details. Okay. And this update personal details probably will also have some code, but let's kind of like do the, I, I won't add any page right now. So I'll start here just with a div. Uh, now for bootstrap, we need to make this to be a model. As far as I, I think I want to add also the paid uh, class to it. And then we have to specify the ID and the ID actually needs to be, uh, but no, why did I create it? It's not in the create student, it's in the manage student. Yeah, let's just move it. 
Uh, okay. Uh, so here we had the create student button and create student model. No, that's not what I wanted to see. It's the, where is it? Student details body. Uh, so it's actually, where are we here? It's data bootstrap target and it should be this one. So we should be careful to give exactly the same ID here. So it would be this one, I guess. And then let's have another div class and here it would be model uh, dialog. It's basically standard booster stuff as far as I can recall. And then what we can have here, have here is this model, uh, the content for the model. I guess it should be something like this. And then we'll have a header. equals model uh, header I guess something like this and then we we'll have a body okay and then we'll have a footer in which we'll place the buttons with the uh, update and the cancel and the cancel will just basically close the model mm. Okay, so it would be plus equals model footer, something like that. So we'll have here a button, and um, hmm, let's let's make a button for the close first. Now the button for the close it will be kind of like plus equals btn. Um, Let's make it also type button. Okay, so BTN, let's make it BTN, I don't know, secondary. And then uh, I think we also need this data bootstrap dismiss and uh, that should be equal to model because that's what we want to dismiss actually, if I'm not wrong. So I guess that should be one button. And then, okay, what did Copilot do here for us? So button type button, class btn, btn success. And then here we have this, um, we can just call it save, I guess. I guess we can just call it save. I don't see anything wrong with that. So save would be okay. Now we have also the button. So we have everything that we need right now for this one. Uh, let's say just as a skeleton and then obviously we'll need to kind of like create some kind of form here and what is another place where we did use a form I guess it was this create student model so when we use a form we will want to have something like this now the only thing is here I'm not sure what what do we need to update here for the personal details let me just check what what we have here in the personal details okay so we just have the name and we just have the email. But don't we also have a phone? Let me check. We have the name, first name, last name. Okay, that's, that's what we want to edit. These are two fields. Uh, the email, yeah, that's what we want to also edit. Uh, maybe also the date of birth should be editable, I guess. Shouldn't it? Also phone numbers, phone number. I guess pretty much all this stuff, well, I, I guess pretty much all this type of stuff we'll want to edit from the student details. The first name, last name, email, because I'm, the student might change their email or might have a new one, so we can just change that. Uh, the date of birth, we might have entered the wrong date of birth initially, so we want to be able to kind of like update that as well. And phone number, yeah, I think we also need the phone number, but you know what? Let's also add the phone number in the student details. Uh, so let me go to the student details and see what do we actually have here. We have uh, regular paragraphs, so we didn't do anything fancy. We can just add here the student phone number. Okay, so that would include the phone number. Cool. So it means that uh, we will need to 
Uh, so if we go back with this create student, um, data annotations, validator. Okay, so here basically we want to do some data validation, but as far as, as I remember here, the data validations did not work and I don't remember exactly why. So we'll probably also have to take a look into that at some point. Um, but yes, we have this first name, last name. So pretty much we'll need the exact same things that we have here actually in this one. So we have So except for the password so except for the password okay we have this uh, view model here that has here this one so let's start from here so if you go to update personal details here in the code uh, let's have a private class Ah, but this will be, I think, a parameter and it, it will be need to be public. Uh, so public. Uh, personal details update. And it should be a class. It can actually even be a record, I guess. But yeah, let, let's keep it as a class here. First name, last name, email, phone number. Okay. But I think there was something missing here, and I think that's uh, public date time date birth. Okay. Let's add the date time now as, as the default here. So this would be the view model then. So we have it then we need kind of like to have this uh, parameter student but it's the one that we just created so let's just move over here so yeah you'll see me doing a lot of copy pasting and, and adapting because i think kind of like it's it's much faster like this uh, but what did go wrong here what's actually wrong here hmm, fast format document so see here is the, this is not a student create, but it's personal details update. Okay, and that would be equal to new. Here, however, we'll need to get some data. We'll need to get the data of the student that that we want to, to edit. It doesn't really make sense to make a call to the database because we have all the data already in the parent component. So actually, we don't want to have this here. And actually what I think it will do, we'll follow this direction with smart components and dub components. So the parent component in this case is the smart component. That parent component is responsible for, I don't know, uh, fetching data and generally kind of like uh, being responsible for the state of this specific student. So I think that the way that we'll do this is simply when we click on the save button, we will not make a call to the database, but instead we'll just have an event callback and then we'll do the write to the database from the parent component because that component should only be the one responsible for for doing this stuff okay so yeah i guess that's that's definitely the way that we'll go with this one um okay jason saying code pilot in action on your screen very nice yeah i, I have copilot for i don't know maybe two months already and sometimes i feel it it's helpful sometimes i feel not but generally it's helpful for such kind of like boilerplate code that, that we have here and when we want to create these models definitely it works just fine so i'm i'm not sure if, it, if it's kind of like really worth that 20 bucks or how much i pay for it so i still have to decide on that um but yeah definitely it, it's not useless it's not completely useless okay so let's go back here to this create what else do we have we have own student created okay obviously this type of callback we'll need to also have in our case um but then here in this component create identity async so here we just create the user directly in the model so you see here that that's a typical example for when i come back to the code that i write after a period of time and uh, i i i think there's room for improvement obviously and here i think it would have been a better idea to also go here with with this uh concept or, or this mindset that we should just have 
uh, an event callback and let the parent component uh, like being the smart component like handling all the all the state mutations that are needed uh, so definitely that that that's an important thing to do uh cool okay so uh let me just do one thing here i i will not change this right now we'll we leave it for now like it is but yeah Maybe if, if you uh, watch later these videos or whoever watch, watches later these videos know that uh, there's this room of improvement here. Maybe we should do the creating in the parent component. But yeah. Uh, okay. So, and then I guess what we want to have is this entire edit form model or edit form component. Edit form is a component that's baked into Blazor and it kind of like makes it easy to use these uh, new features of enhanced form editing that we have in this new Blazor with .NET 8. So we would be here in the model body and it would be something like that. Okay, what's the problem here? What's the problem here? Uh, submit form, form name. We need to um, give here another name here update person i guess i'll go on a different row here update student personal info and this name kind of like will be a little bit longer i can't really uh do anything about that uh, because these form names so in order for these enhanced form posts to work properly they need to be unique across the entire application so yeah i think we kind of like need cannot convert lambda expression to intended delegate type because some of return types in the block are not implicitly convertible to the delegate return type okay i'm not sure exactly what it refers to but obviously we don't have here a submit form actually this button that we have in the end should be type submit and actually, the problem here right now is that we need the buttons to be actually in the same... They need to be kind of like inside the form. Otherwise, on the submit, the tie submit will not work simply. Will simply not work. So yeah, I guess we will have to move this out of the footer. Um, I guess we can move this entire, I don't know. I said, I don't want to concentrate really a lot on, on the UI and how it looks. So I, I don't really care that much about it. Uh, so probably it, it will look a little bit weird, uh, but I guess we'll just keep it like that for now. And yeah, obviously we have a lot of, of red lines here. So we need a submit form. Uh, man, but everything is underlined. So this one is with this one, so that should be okay. Now private async. Let's just give it a task. So now we have the submit form. So now, yeah, it's actually okay. So if I go F12, it does see it correctly. But why do I have all these errors? Ah. What lambda apps? What? Where do I have lambda expressions here? Label input text bind value input first name first name is older John. Obviously, here we'll need to get some data, but we'll get that from the parent and kind of like we won't have the placeholder, but we will have basically a first name here. Uh, in uh, in this one uh, but what else do we have what's what's the problem where do we have a lambda expression here i really don't understand cannot convert lambda expression to delegate type because of the return type in the block are not implicitly convertible to get delegate return type but where is this I don't know. Um, 
Also, it's happened to me quite a few times that basically the errors that I saw here were kind of like not really errors. So let me let me maybe open this again. Oh, there are still errors. Uh, let me I don't know where where is the project. Let me clean it up. But still, I have this problem. Okay, so let me go here on error list. Let's check. What? What is this? For password and no accessible extension method. That's strange. That's totally strange. No, let's try to build it. Hello, Marco. Thank you very much for joining. Joining. I'm not sure, I, but I think you you did right earlier. No, now I have 12 errors. Okay, it does not contain a definition for password. No accessible extension method. Where is this? Okay, yeah, obviously I don't have password, so that's correct. That's correct. Uh, so I guess we can get rid of this entire stuff here. Okay. So that was the problem. So that was the problem. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But the errors that I was seeing, that was totally, totally misleading with the lambda expression. Now, why do I have two buttons here? Ah, because these are from the old one. You see, that's why it's not okay to copy paste code. So that was from, from the previous component. Okay. So what do we have here? Let's try again. Mongol dialog. You know what? Since we don't have any errors right now, let's run the application and let's take a look at how it looks like. Okay. So that's here our web application. These are our students here that are loading right now. And then I want to manage this one. Okay. Phone number. Obviously, I don't have a phone number, so that's why it's like this. But this one, <clears throat> this won't open. Because because I haven't added this component anywhere. That's the problem. So I have created a component, this update personal, but I haven't add, added this component to the DOM. The only question is, where do we want to add it? I think it might make sense. Go here in the student details body and where, right where we have this update, let's just add that one. So, Update personal details. It should be like this. Very nice way of explanation showing us from a real world developer scenario how to tackle a problem. Yeah, these are the types of problems that we kind of like encounter in our day to day work. Only on the live stream they are even worse because what I struggle a lot with is kind of like to have a clear understanding on what I actually want to do. While in the real world I actually have some requirements are fairly clear, so I need exactly what I need to do. So here I'm kind of like a little bit always going with the flow. That's why I'm not always taking the best decisions like I did with the model for the for the create student. Okay, but now I think I have this hot reload, so I guess I can just hit that. I guess I can just hit that and go back to our application. Yep, it works. So we have the first name, the last name, the email, the date of birth. I think we are missing the phone number here. I think we are just missing the phone number, but if I click close, then it uh, it just closes it. I just need another field for the phone, for, for the phone number. 
and I think I will kind of like also maybe bring these two fields together um, like creating a new column so this one will be here and just maybe between the email uh, and the last name let's also have a phone number or afterwards maybe I don't know so let's click this close for now I will close this so let's do this small update okay so let me go back to this component and what we need here is let's start with uh, the phone number so here we have this input for email and this input for email to the term and i said that after this input for email that's kind of like on a row and it does take half of the row width uh, so here is where we will actually want to also move our date of birth but it would be kind of like with the entire uh, column okay so cut on the same level with this one paste now the email and the address should be on the email and the date picker should be on the same spot and then here in this other row here I've said that I wanted an input it would be kind of like an input text something like this one but we'll change it to be for the phone number and we'll keep the phone number as a string I guess so we for now okay label for uh, on uh, number class form label here that's a bit uh, own input text bind value input phone number class form control id let's change the name of the identifier to be uh, exactly like this and then the placeholder i don't know what should be uh one two three four five six i don't know let's maybe Plus, I don't know, four zero in Romania it would be four zero for the country. Uh, so four zero and then uh, seven four three one two three four five whatever. Uh, so that would be kind of like phone number. For right now it's just a placeholder, but we'll get this this data. Okay, a lot of confidence as a developer to see that I'm not alone in uh, causing problems for myself by uh, copy paste code lot. Well, that's actually a very very big problem, and guys. Le I, I want to tell you a story. I really want to tell you this story. It's 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 actually a very nice one, and it was really a good learning point. So you might know that what I also do is I am teaching at a local university, and I had kind of like um, a course basically, or well the um, the well let's say the practical work for a course. But I'm kind of like also defining the agenda. For, for the course itself, which is called Web Technologies. Uh, well, the equivalent, but in Romania. Now, the thing is that in, in this Web Technologies, what we did is kind of like nothing too fancy. It, it was not .NET. So my, my idea was that, okay, we want to kind of like make students aware and understand the current, uh, probably widest adopted web technologies that used to create kind of like front-end applications. So we went through a little bit of advanced JavaScript. We went through uh, we went through Node.js, so setting up a server with Node.js and also with React, Node.js with, with, with Express. Now, obviously, one thing that I do here is that uh, I, I give an assignment that, that everybody needs to kind of like do a very small project, personal project, and present it um, at the end, basically before the, the exams. And uh, there was one student that kind of like me or well wrote me an email and I got to, to talk with the student and he was saying that okay uh, I have done everything exactly like you have done also in your demos but my application is not working and Node.js was throwing some very weird things there with kind of like couldn't read the, the text or, or, or something like this from a regular JS file so uh, that was kind of like also very very misleading and very problematic however now, uh, when I was looking, then I, I had a session with the student and I said, okay, let's let's solve this problem. So I was trying to, to look to understand exactly because usually people when say I did write exactly the same as I saw wherever, usually it's not the same, something is missing. So the good thing was the project obviously was not too large. So we basically looked file by file and indeed everything looked okay. So nothing really looked bad. And still it, it was throwing that 
exception, basically when, when you wanted to, to start the node application. So I was thinking, just okay, so it seems obviously that uh, Node.js has a problem reading the files. So what could cause this type of problems? Because they seem to be like a regular file. And then the idea came to my mind. When you copy paste from the internet, you might have some characters or some things that you don't see in the file, but that are actually there. And maybe some some of these characters or, or, or things like that might cause Node.js to not be able to kind of like um, you know, do that. So what I've asked the student to do is to simply take all the content that they had in, in, in the files, like file by file, and simply uh, paste it in a notepad and then create a totally new file uh, in their project and paste the content from the notepad in in the new project file and he did this for all the files and guess what it worked so the problem was or the other problem is when you copy paste things from the internet especially code it could happen that you actually copy or you have there some characters that you don't see visually so there are things in there that you don't see visually in your ID or code editor, but it could definitely break some of your tooling or it could contain viruses and that's uh, some, some other stuff. So the key learning point here is if you copy paste code directly from, from the internet, you might have some very weird problems. So also be careful with that. Couldn't find the directory that was in the code that was copied. No, the, the directory was there, but the problem is probably there were some, some weird stuff uh, in there, some, some weird bytes that you didn't see visually as characters, and that's no JS to kind of like throw those, those exceptions. So yeah, that's key learning point of what can go wrong if you just copy paste code. However, in this case, we just copy pasted code from one file of our ID to another file of our ID. So um, this shouldn't happen, but that's a good learning, I guess. Cool. Okay, so let's move. So we have right now this phone number that we have created here, and then we have created this once. Now, one other thing that I want maybe to do here is maybe, I don't know, separate things a little bit uh, plus row. So let's just move the entire or all the buttons or the div with the buttons. Let's just move them in a dedicated row. Okay, and it form. Okay, so now we have, I think, done all the things that I wanted. So let's run the application again and check also visually if everything works. Let's also check it visually. Nice song here, nice groove. Kind of like a little bit of energy here. I feel that energy is missing during this live stream. I definitely feel that energy is missing. We have here update. Yep, we have first name, last name, um, first name, last name, email, phone number, and the date of birth. And if we click save, no, I didn't have any validation error. So yeah, validation is not working. We'll, we'll fix that at, at a certain point. So yeah, now we have this one. We can close this. So now we have this. Everything's okay. So now the only thing that we need to do is get the data of the students, like all the data that we have here, or maybe not all the data, but the data that we need and give it here to the component that needs to kind of like do the update. So let me close this. Let me just close this. However, now I, if I think a little bit, I, I guess we might have a problem here. And I guess then that's probably also the reason why in the end for the create student, I actually implemented the logic of the update in the child component. And the problem is these student details, which is basically the parent of our update that, that we want, this is 100% server rendered. So if it's server rendered, you know, let's just try it out because I'm not sure. Because I'm not sure if event callbacks works. I'm not sure if event callbacks work if it's server if if it's server rendered. And actually, that's that's exactly the, the same thing that we had previously. 
I'm not sure how and if the event callbacks work if it's server rendered, but let's let, let's try it again or let's try it out. Now, first of all, what we need to do here is what we have in our parent component is this student details. And we need to fully qualify the student details because I was dumb enough to name the component and the student details, let's say, call it model or view model, exactly the same. So that's why we need to fully qualify that. And actually we need to have those here. We will go in the update personal data and in the code behind public. Uh, do I have the public twice? Yes, I have the public twice. So let's just call that and that would be a parameter. Okay. So it means that we just, we right now have this student. Now, the only thing is that we have this personal details update and this is what we use for the form and not actually the student details. And now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, maybe we can, we can use directly this in the form. But no, because we'll need, we'll need to have a dedicated um, supply parameters from form because otherwise it directly. So here, um, funky gamer, okay, is using Razor SSR just like Blades in Laravel. I'm not sure about Blades in Laravel. Laravel is something that I never work with, but it's from my point of view exactly the same thing as the Next.js app router and exactly the same thing as Angular Universal. So it's a model where basically everything is server side rendered at the beginning, but you can add interactivity uh, to the components that kind of like need client in interactivity, like for instance, when you want to, to press buttons. So it's definitely similar or kind of like a competing product, let's say to Next.js or Angular Universal. I'm not sure about Laravel Blades. I, I never work with Laravel. So the PHP universe is something that I never touched. So I touched JavaScript, I touched Java, I touched Python, but I never touched PHP. So, but there's time for that, I guess. There's still time for that. So now the idea is that I guess we need to also have an override of the uninitialized here, because what I want to do here is map. What we get as parameter from uh, our parent component, so the student to our form here. And this will everything be synchron uh, synchronous operations. So protected override what do I want to override? Uninitialized, but I want the regular one, not the, yeah, this one. Okay. So what I want to do here is in the uninitialized. So I, I'll do things here very procedurally. Uh, equals, but th this shouldn't be null because it's passed by, by the parent. Uh, okay. So what I want to do here is for instance, say here, uh, input dot, let's take them one by one, by one. Spring dot empty. Okay. First name. Okay. Okay. I guess I should do it. Like definitely copilot in some instances saves a lot of time because you don't have to type really everything. Phone number. Phone number will be empty probably because we don't have any phone number for anybody. And input date of birth uh, to them. Student date of birth. If not, then we'll use the date time now. Do we have anything else? No, I don't think we have anything else. So right now in our own initialize, so when this component gets initialized, then we do the mapping. So it means that here in the input, we already, we should already have the values that come active from the parent component. Now, then the only thing that we need to do, I guess, if we go here to the body and uh, did I call it student? I guess, yes. And it should be the student. We just pass in the student as, as a parameter and now, I think everything should be fine. So let's run the application and, and check if this works. Now, Punky Gamer, where are you watching from? 
and are you for the first time watching this stream? So guys, please say hello or just send an emoji with a finger up if you are for the first time watching this stream. Or for the first time ever on the Code Wrinkles channel. That would be our web application, students. Okay, let's manage this student, update. Yep. So we see that we have all this information. Like we have the first name, we have the last name, we have the email address, we have the date of birth, we have the phone number. But this phone number is just a placeholder, as you can see. So it's just a placeholder for it. So here then we can just edit things and then just, well, do stuff here. Cool. So let's now set up all the part with um, with the event callback and see if it works. So we, we can literally do this right now just, just with the front end. So without the need of doing anything on the back end. But then we'll obviously need to implement the back end for that as well. Um, okay. Is the music gone or... No, it's not. I don't hear the music anymore. Cool. Uh, so, okay, we, we got the data. So then the other thing that we will need here is, and that would be also a parameter. Okay. And here, public event, event callback of student basic info. Get set. But uh, what do I want to... Should I send the student basic info altogether? I guess I could do that. I guess I could do that. Then I have to fully qualify it. Uh, yeah. Bad choices. Bad choices lead to bad things. But yeah, that's it. So let's have this event callback. Okay, and what we want to do here in this submit form right now, we want kind of like, in this case, we want to map actually back from the input to our initial student. So we'll have here, uh, student, where is student dot email equals input dot email. What's the problem here? Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, we actually need to create a new object. Because this student details, I guess it has, it's a record. It has a record. But I can use the width. Um, but that would still create a new student. So yeah, I guess I'll, I'll follow the classics. I, I'm an old guy, so it's very hard to change my my habits. So we'll have here basically. Let, let's create a new student details. Var update equals new. Uh, to smart school web student details. Okay. That's okay, but what's the problem with this one? It's a record. That's the problem. So copilot, I would have expected that you know that this is a record and that the syntax doesn't work like that. So, what we need to specify here, it's maybe, I don't know. What do we need? Hmm, student ID. The student ID is exactly the same as what we had before. Uh, student to student ID. Then, what we need? The name, the first name. Like, we don't know. It, it could be that it has changed in our input, so we'll give the value from the input. Input dot uh, first name. Then, what we need? Input dot last name. Okay. Input dot email. Then, uh, what do we still? Uh, input phone number, date of birth. Uh, what's the problem with this one? No. So, uh, date of birth, student address, and student relatives. Yeah, because these ones, these remain the same. Obviously, I think probably the, the best way to go here is to create a dedicated view model for this, and then the parent component should kind of like uh, send only this personal details update, probably. So, now the idea is that we have this updated, 
and then what we can do here is we can simply await on student created invoke async and we send the updated part there uh, obviously here we don't need a semicolon so let's get rid of the semicolon there but what i have two parentheses what's happening here okay okay so still i have some problems here why do i have problems Argument 5 cannot convert from string to system date time. Okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. Uh, so I think uh, it's because it's input date of birth. Yes. And then it's phone number. Student address and student relatives. So I think should be i think it should be something like that i just want to thank you for your videos i learned a lot from them hello from morocco thank you very much mustafa for joining from morocco i'm very happy to have you here and thank you very much for watching the videos hopefully hopefully they were useful the next video on, on the channel will be a very nice one i think it will be about how to add and what are the pitfalls and caveats if you want to add Google authentication to your Blazor SSR application. So basically just this regular login with Google button. That's what we want or this will be the next video all about. Uh, so yeah, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to get that video and uh, know how to add Google authentication in your Blazor SSR application, then subscribe to the channel right now. Don't wait or waste any time. So this would invoke and then this would be kind of like it would send this new version of basically a new student details to our parent component. Now the parent component, uh, but it's this one I guess, yep. So in the parent component I need to um, create a method, let's maybe we can do it also private, private uh, async task update student, okay. Student update student away, uh, but no. Uh, yes, I want to invoke async with status changed. Or no, I don't want to invoke. I don't have any parent here. Why would I want to invoke async? Actually, I do need a task for here. I do need a task. I can just return void. I have this update student, but um, let's call it info because we'll have methods for update address. Uh, so like this. And then when we kind of like go to the child, we also have to specify the second one, which is uh, not on student created. Did I call it on student created? I think for pilot was this. No, on details, uh, student on personal info updated. Okay, that would be the name of my. I think we need to change this also here, obviously. And then we can go back here to the parent component and we'll have this one and here we'll have, how, how did we call that? Let me go on another line, something with update probably, something with update. But I don't like this. Okay, let's do it like this. Also, good guy. Funky Gamer. Okay, let's see. Uh, I just, okay, great. I'm already subscribed. Thank you very much, Mustafa, for, for the subscription. Funky Gamer just followed you on X and LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Make sure to also be subscribed to this ch channel and uh, good guy. Thanks for the videos. Wish all the people I interview for my team were watching your videos. I wish all the people I interview would watching would, would be watching my videos actually. 
you know really the, the topics for a lot of videos actually come from interviews that i have so yeah it's really really strange but yeah that's uh, that's definitely one thing obviously i'm i'm not saying that i'm always right and to should well there, there's definitely other good content out there uh, but uh, i think most of the things that i do come uh, comes really from the things that i really do in practice so it's not just theory or things that i read from documentation and i just try to replicate so i'm i try to keep everything as close to it to well what i do as possible okay so now we have this type of thing here and theoretically we should already be able to test if this works because even if we don't have any change in in the database kind of like we can still prove that our communication between components works now my assumption is that it will not work because all the components right now are actually are actually server render so ssr but we have a form and the form uses enhanced form post um okay i i'm glad so good guy maybe maybe you schedule mustafa for an interview that that would be something that would be a great success story for the channel i i would be great if something like this happens uh okay so let's click on manage and now let's click on update so let's change here it's, uh, I don't know, keep the name code wrinkles. Then, let's change this to me. And let's change the date. It's, I don't know what year should it be. Maybe I was wrong with one year, so it should be 2007. Let's maybe have July and let's maybe have 18. And let's also add a phone number here. So let's have here plus uh, four zero three four five six something like that. And let's click save. And I don't see any error. And there is no error, but I assume it's kind of like not working because of the reason that I said before, because every, everything is sender, server rendered. So I guess we'll need to find other ways around to... to pass data around. But what I am curious, what I am curious, let's place a breakpoint here. Here's, do I enter this method here? I'm also curious, do I enter this method here? How are you currently handling authorization? We don't have much authorization right now, but that's what we did in, in the first streams. Anoop. Literally in the first stream, that's, that, that's the only thing we did. We implemented basically a login, logout, and kind of like very, very basic authorization based on roles. Right now we have role-based authorization, but the only role that we are currently using for authorization is admin. But when we create a user, we uh, well, we can specify or we can define what, what type of role that the user should have. For instance, when we create a student, we automatically add the student to the role of a student. So that's what we are doing right now. Okay, so I'm curious if we hit these ones. Let me maybe here have an update and let me just update one thing here. We'll update even only this one. So if we click save, so I entered this method, so this method actually was executed. Now let me click on continue. I entered also this one. Okay, okay. So theoretically right now this student that I have here has this, uh, where is it? <laughs> Last name like this. Let me go through the code. And now it has... Why wasn't the name updated? okay okay so the problem is that we didn't actually have the update we didn't actually have to update so let me check once again where so the callback and so it actually went well now the only thing that is a problem here now the updated so here we get the student id we get from the input first name why can't i see that 
why doesn't it show me uh okay let me let me go back here what's the input right now so input why is my last name not changed here i mean i changed the last name hmm hmm so we did bind and this is kind of like a two-way binding But why doesn't my input reflect that? So why doesn't it reflect that? The problem is here. So what am I doing wrong here? What am I doing differently than all the others? When I click on save. Model is the input. Okay then this kind of like has changed okay but why doesn't it why can't i see this actually hmm and then obviously i invoke everything with this updated but this update it has actually the exact same details as as, as it had previously so obviously then there's no update here the question is, why does this form validation not work? Not validation, but form binding. So this is the student details. I need to go to the update one. This is supply parameter form form, personal detail update, so input. I have specified this uh, as the model for our edit form hmm the binding is not working properly yes indeed the binding is not working properly but i'm not i don't understand why because this bind value this that's this does basically a two-way binding so if you change something here it should be available there it's actually the same thing that we do in the create student let's go to the create student model so you see that we have exactly the same thing and we have the input but in that case the input actually changed we have this input text first name it's exactly the same exactly the same here our input is not a record is a class that's that's why in fact we need a class so and properties are get set so yeah obviously i have some defaults here so here everything is done correctly and i see everything in in the browser is it because it's a record it's it's not a record Anoop. It's, it's not a record. That's one of the reasons why we don't have it as a record. That, that wouldn't work. And we have the supply parameters from form. Here in the own initialized, we just do these things and we know that these things work. But then why doesn't it do the binding? I, I don't understand. I really don't get that. I really don't get that. I don't know, let's try again. Let's change this one. Once again, email, it's still the old email. It's still the old email. Apply parameter from form, so it's exactly the same thing. Here we have this submit form and the submit form we kind of like all the details from the input are okay so here everything works in the create personal details update i think it's the form you should use update personal in the form you should use update personal yeah, but I'm using, what do you mean exactly? I changed the foreign name, update student personal info. Personal details update, 
it's this one it's the one that we have defined that's specific for this for this component so it's personal details update input it's ex exactly that one it's public because it needs to be public because this is a parameter from a form so it needs to be public i don't know that's really weird that's really weird let's just close it for now and let's just think for a second so what could the problem be here form name so if something would be with the form name but that's just for for blazor to identify with this feature of enhanced form posting to identify which form actually should be executed uh, so that kind of like doesn't have anything to do the model here is input so personal details update it's update personal info okay update personal info details that's the name of the component and the property input so that's that's correct so that's 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 correct data okay then we have input text bind value this should be used with two-way binding so that should bind both ways so from the form to the model and from the model to to the form and the problem is that input first name ID first name okay I don't want to have a placeholder here because I expect to have data but I uh, that for sure was not a problem so then we have last name you know that this one also doesn't work then we have the email or email ID email input email everything's okay with this one don't want to have a placeholder here then input date of birth first okay that's also correct so i really have no clue about this in fact it, it's exactly like a form should be in blazor hello Rolo. you just got here at a time we kind of like or I struggle to understand why the two-way binding doesn't work in my Blazor application. I don't know. Could maybe, I don't know, let's clean solution, rebuild solution. Maybe this might help, I don't know. Let's do rebuild. run it again so yeah we have some setbacks here I really don't understand why the two-way binding is not working here manage hmm I think I have an idea. Nope, still not, still doesn't work. Hmm. How do you mean don't work? I don't use 2A a lot. It means that when I do a change in the form, basically that change I, I, I don't have it updated on the on the model form or on the form model when when I hit the submit. That's that's the problem. And I don't understand why. Um You know what? Let's do some changes. Um, 
input email. Let's hard code some values here. I'm curious if there might be a problem because we kind of like do these assignments here. Uh, okay. That one we can delete. Phone number, let's leave it empty. And daytime, let's leave it like this. Okay, now basically we are just creating the, some on dummy values basically. So uh, these are not the values that come from, from the parent. But I want to check if they are updated right now. So let's try it again. So in all the other live streams, all the forms that we have created, everything worked fine. But this one actually doesn't. We have these things here. Let's have it like this and let's click on save. Uh, student. So I still don't have an update. So it's actually still the same. It's actually still the same. Have the breakpoint again. Let's go to the input. Nope, no change. No change in any of them. No, let, let me try something else. I'm curious if this one changes. Input. No, this also. So somehow this kind of like binding doesn't really work. How do you mean don't work? I don't. Um, yeah, it's kind of like when I change the value in, in the form. I don't have it in the input when I hit the submit. And I literally don't get it why. These are with getters and with setters. So everything's okay, everything's public, nothing is read only. Here we just do some assignments, we assign some values. And those values are also displayed here in the form. Hmm. Any issues in the console? No, there is no error basically. There's literally no error here. everything happens client side or we just work client side right now it's just it's just blazer you know what i think about it let me try something but no it should work also with I was thinking about uh, making this component uh, interactive because I see use object for bind value. Uh, yes, that's kind of like what do you mean? That's that's how we did it in all the forms. So bind value and input first name. So that's what do you mean uh, by you use object for bind value? Input first name, bind value input last name. No, uh, all of them. I tried also with phone number. Let's let's try again and let's try to update all of them. But we tried also with the phone number. We tried also with the email. I think the first name is the only uh, is the only one that we didn't try with. Yes. 
Let's see. I know it's a typo, but it doesn't really matter. Let's change the year, maybe. Input. No, none of them is updated. Bind value. Input first name replaced with some public string. Test first name. Okay, I I would try this, but I, I I'm not I'm not really ready to accept this as a workaround because that's not how it should work. So bind value kind of like it does to a data binding. So you shouldn't do these explicit things here. Uh, for instance, where do we have here? Even kind of like IntelliSense is telling you here this should be used with two-way binding. So you shouldn't kind of like specify it explicitly, but let me, or let's, let's try the way that you, what happens if you remove the default values given in own initialized? I think that's also one uh, good thing to, let's try this out. You never know with Microsoft, uh, that's right, that's right. It's actually the same thing, uh, why doesn't it want to work? You know what, let's close everything and let's start it again. So we have removed the own initialized thing, so now we will have only defaults here. But uh, yeah, so let's try first with this one. Yes, this change should be reflected in the database, but we didn't get to this point. I just wanted to prove that the communication between the components is working properly. So we haven't implemented the backend for this. But that's for sure not the reason why it doesn't work. Because if, if it doesn't work, I can't implement the backend for that, basically. So obviously right now we have uh, this one. Uh, everything is empty or has default values. And we can leave the date of today and let's say here I don't know, random number. Let's click save. Um, okay, why was my method not hit? So this time actually it worked. This time, so it worked when we didn't have values. That's strange. That's really strange. And it's kind of like... And you see the difference that it worked. Because here in the header we can see the values that were taken initially from the database. Here's the updated value. Because we have... Th these are two different components. So this one was updated because here was the callback, but here this one was not updated. So kind of like it works, but why does it work when we have no data? So I think I'm missing something with the new blazer. So why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? No personal detail update.
and all the others we will not initialize. And all the others we will not initialize. There were build errors. Would you like to continue to run the last successful build? No, I don't want. What's the build error? Semicolon. I did forget the semicolon. Where did I forget the semicolon? Here. There's one in plus. Let's try it out again. So let's take a look at this. We have students. Then manage. Then update. So we have some of the information. That's okay. We have the first name. So let's change this into, into John. Let's give here uh, another one. And the email, let's call it me at codeventools.com. Here, let's have, I don't know, let's leave the date the same. And let's click save. But why don't I hit that breakpoint? Uh, that's strange. Let's see what has changed. The date of birth, I didn't change. The email was not changed. Quality contract. What's ah? This. The first name was not changed, but in this case also the last name was not added. And that's strange. So yeah, I'm totally doing something wrong here. I mean, I did lots of blazer, but why? Is this not working? So now basically none of them is working. Let's set here. John. John at email. Home. and let's click a save here and now input so we have the email but those were not changed at all so the first name was not was not changed in this case the last name was not changed in this case so it was not added at all not the email so basically right now nothing is working again So, let's remove everything. Does it have to do something with the uninitialized? Okay, I, I think we'll, we'll take a short break. And probably during the break I will be able to kind of like, maybe I'll, I'll get some new ideas. Uh, but if not, we'll kind of like look into, into the documentation of forms and see exactly, probably we'll find out what we are doing wrong with this two-way binding that it doesn't really work. So, please don't run away because I promise you we will solve this problem. So it will not be like this. So it will not remain like this. We will solve that. I promise you we will solve it. So stay tuned. Grab, I don't know, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a cup, a cup of water, if you want to, I don't know, have a snack, whatever. Let's have just a short break and we will then continue and try to solve this problem and also implement, obviously, the backend part so that we have this functionality, let's say, end to end. So stay tuned and we'll be back in around 10 minutes.
Okay, so I'm back now. How are you holding up? Everything is okay? So, I still don't have an idea about what exactly is happening here. So that's why, in this case, we will kind of like try to do something here to read through the documentation. Let me go here. So, if we look here at this one, we use the edit form, so that's actually what we are using. And the only thing that I see here is that kind of like they use this at at the beginning. So for the submit and basically all the other things, they still use the bind value. And then kind of like it logs the information. And then supply parameter from form. Iron, why don't use edit context? Why should I use edit context right now? So Edit context is useful for, I don't know, maybe some more complex scenarios, but right now that, that should work out of the box, like... And you see that they even initialize the new object also in the uninitialized override. On the input, provide the name of the form. I have. Let's check out. Form name. Basically, if you don't provide this, now there is there are two things that I kind of like uh, here in the documentation. They use this at here and here at the submit form. They also use this at, and these were the only two things that kind of like I saw in the documentation that were different than what we had. So input bind value they had input dot id in the documentation. So that's what I did here. But it's kind of like the first name, and here is the last name. I don't know, so let's see if something changed if we did add this at, but kind of like I'm not sure it should have. In the attribute, the name must be added. Property input model. Ocean boom, thank you very much. We'll look into that, but was that in the documentation? Do that. Manage. Let's have it here. Let's update only these two. No, it's kind of like the same. Didn't uh, didn't really help. So the fact that we had this ad was not there anymore. Let's check out what what you mean, Lucian. So you said uh, supply parameter from form. I am not sure exactly what uh, property input the model, uh, but it's so it's the same. That's the property for them. It was the starship. For me, it's the one, and then they just use it here. So I don't see any attribute here. They just have a page, but I don't have. I don't want to have this as routable, and they inject. Uh, but other than this, I see it as being exactly the same. Rendered where the edit form element appears, the model is created in the components code block. Okay. Property model. Property assigned to edit form model assigned parameter. The supply parameter from form attribute indicates that the value of the associated property should be supplied from the form data, which we do. Data in the request that matches the property's name is bound to the property. Okay. Input text component. It's just the bind value directive attribute binds the model to ID model property for the input components value property and the submit. And then Blazor enhances form navigation with stream rendering is supported in for edit form, but we don't need stream rendering right now because we don't read anything from the database. Then we have the submit validation summary, but we didn't play with the validation summary so far. So then they have the exact same example. Assign the name of the form when you have more than one form on the page. But I don't have one... Ah... Maybe I have more than one form on the page. Although right now I don't think that I have more than one form. Because...
eight student kills body. Here I don't have any form. So that's basically the parent page. Our student details is more the parent page. So this is the parent page. And here's the body. And in the body, I have only one form right now. But theoretically, okay, we can try what you said, but, but I don't think that this will help. Because if Blazor can't find the form, then you get an error. So if it can't find the form, then you, you get an exception. So, um, here, let's, let's change this. So, uh, update, how was our form named? Update student personal info. Apply parameter form form. To be honest, I actually ne never done that. Uh, so can I just supply here a string? No, I can't. It does not contain a constructor that takes in one argument. Okay. So I can't supply it here. Maybe it's a named one. Yeah, it's named. Then like this. Okay. Let's see. If you have multiple forms on the page, from which should be taken uh, the parameter. Yeah, but I don't have multiple forms on the page. That's that's the thing here. That's the thing here. I don't have multiple forms. I just have one. Because we are on this page, and right now on this page there's only one form, which is this one. And it's still the same behavior. So it still doesn't do the binding. So you say it's form name, not name. Okay. Okay, so not just name, but form name. I'm skeptical. Right now. I'm very skeptical, but let's check. Let's see. No, it's still the same behavior. But it's still exactly the same thing. It doesn't really do the binding. So it doesn't bind from the form uh, to this one. Notice there's there's only one thing that I can have uh, maybe to use this enhance. I don't know. This would kind of like add explicitly the enhance form post navigation. Does uh, only initialize code when Actually, I think that's a good, I think that's, oh my god, I think that's, that's the thing. Because since this is not, let's, let's check with the enhance, because with the enhance, I think it, it might work. But I think you are on point, Mustafa. So, if you want to move to Romania, or Bulgaria, or Moldova, and want to get a job as .NET developer, mm -hmm. contact me. Uh, still didn't work, but you know what, let's continue. Because I think since everything is server rendered here, I think the uninitialized might... Uh, But why didn't I... why didn't it get called right now? So we got into the uninitialized, so yeah. We got into the uninitialized. And the input is read correctly, oh my god.
but why does this happen? Because kind of like, I mean, it's written exactly in the documentation. They even do the same thing there. They obviously don't explicitly specify about two-way binding, but Mustafa was on point here. Now that's a behavior that I'm kind of, because now obviously this is overridden. Now this is overridden. So now it gets the uninitialized when the page is rendered initially. So we get all the needed values. And then when I click on save, When I click on save, the only issue has get called again. You know, that's that's a topic for a different video because this behavior in this new blazer, that's bad. And the documentation is totally misleading. Because documentation tells you kind of like, yeah, on initialized, you initialize it. But if you really want to have two-way binding, then what, what do you do about that? Because the input right now is okay. But I override it. Let's think a little bit. Theoretically, I guess this problem would be solved if I make this component render on I do it like this because I want to um, let the pre-render pause. I guess this might solve the problem because right now this component should be interactive, but kind of like this defeats the purpose of it defeats the purpose of kind of like not adding interactivity on the form, which is one of the strongest marketing points. Okay, now I also have the validation. It's, so the validation was not working previously. But now when I click on the save button, nothing happens. That's strange. So now nothing happens when I click on the save. Obviously, I think I could solve this, but kind of like that, that would defeat the purpose. Blazor SSR is just unpredictable for me. Well, indeed, it is, unpre it is uh, unpredictable, but next Next.js was still... So it, breakpoint wouldn't help in this case. I assume that this on... Callback that will be invoked when the form is submitted and the edit form edit context is determined to be valid. Actually, I have a breakpoint. No, no, I don't have. Why don't I have a breakpoint here? Because theoretically, I could use the, for instance, here on click, but that wouldn't be nice. Because you lose a lot of functionality. Yeah, but the, the breakpoints were not hit. Because if the breakpoints would have been hit, um, I would have seen this. Oops. Okay, so now this was done. The name was updated. 
now everything is correct. So why didn't it kind of like... But then it didn't update it here. Let's try again. Obviously it's the same one, so it's only this one that changed the John. Let's click save. Let's click continue. So I don't have any required attributes, but it's really strange because I hit this one, but I didn't hit this one. Not this one. Oh, where is it? I didn't hit this one, so why didn't I hit this one? This one was invoked, but then nothing came to the parent. Now when I click save, nothing happens. I don't have any validations, I'm not sure why it's... It's still green everything. Attempting to reconnect to server, so now I guess something went wrong here. And now I hit, now I hit the breakpoint. Submit form. Continue. Ah. Now I hit the breakpoint several times. Yep. But the problem is still... I didn't hit the other one. So the other... So this one was not hit. Because this one is not interactive and the other one is interactive. Okay. So, let's try this one. What can we do to not make this interactive? So we have the regular form post, we have even this enhanced. So if enabled form submission is performed without fully reloading the page, this is equivalent to adding data enhanced in the form. Okay, so let's try with this one. So we have found out that the problem here is that the uninitialized async is actually called twice. Like when, when you do the post, this is also called again. So how can we kind of like... How can we circumvent that? Because we need this uninitialized to set some, some things. And if the uninitialized is hit, then all the lifecycle methods are hit. So. How can we go about this one? That's strange. Let me check. Let me check. Laser forms to re binding. Okay, let's see. Binding features. Input bind, input value. What did they do here? They just 
data bind to the input value itself, which is a string, is another string. Textbox is updated in the UI only when the component is rendered, not in response to changing the fields or properties value. Since components render themselves after event handler code executes, usually reflected in the UI immediately after an event is triggered. Okay. The demonstration on how data binding composes in HTML, the following example binds input value property to a second input and on change attributes. To be honest, I don't. But this kind of like has totally changed. The use value and here on change. Change vert arcs input value equals. So I think it's kind of like what uh, what I think the good guys should suggested. Man, but did they do this complicated here right now? specify so I guess we need to do the to do it like that I guess we need to do it like that but where was it yeah uh troll of yeah you were you were the one that was saying that but it means that literally changed with the blazers SSR because kind of like that was not the case before let me check I scroll right now the comments to see exactly where kind of like you did provide okay so bind value get okay let's try to do that uh, so we are here on this one so let's start with this one so bind value okay and that would be the get it would be input first name then we need a separate bind value i guess with a set equals and then but I think we even need to do it like this I think I'm not sure it might be something like um, value Now what's the problem with this? Ah, expected, okay. Oh my god, oh my god. So it's actually the first time that I try to do this two-way two binding on a new Blazor SSR form. And the fact that this is missing from their documentation on a form is mind-boggling from my point of view. So I... don't know what to do with that so let's just update this to john save um and now this one was hit and then the first name is still not what we expect but why didn't i hit anything else Because I don't have breakpoints on the others. But I'm still overriding it. The problem is I'm still overriding things here in, in this, on this last. We already did with the form name, so we have this already. Here it is. Here it is. But this also didn't help. So, did anyone manage to kind of like do a form submission with two-way binding in, in the new blazer? Let's 
try again. So yeah, let's check it. So the input right now, once again, is the correct one because I have changed this. But then it still, it still gets overwritten. So now. Hmm. And if 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 we if we get the student from the database in this component, we will still do the same thing in the own initialized and we will have the exact same problem. So even if we get the student here directly from the database, that, that, that wouldn't really help. That wouldn't really help. Obviously, I'm looking right now, but I don't really find any concrete example. Everything I find on Google is basically mostly related to the to the old Blazor version, so not, not this one. That's um, embarrassing, I would say, for myself right now, but uh, can you please look into Blazor binding documentation? Yes, I did look in the binding documentation. And if I get it from the DB, I, I we kind of like, yeah, defeats the purpose, like the, the Purpose is to make as few as calls to the database as possible, and if I have all the information already in the parent component, it's only logical that I pass it, but it will still yield the exactly same uh, same result. Blazor to wait. So I I that's the blazer the the two binding documentation, and I, I was already here. And this is where we actually did this uh, bind value get and bind value set. The problem is that it works. Like we kind of like do something like this. Uh, but. The problem is that when we post the form, we go to the uninitialized method. The value, okay. And these are all the things that I kind of like I'm really not interested in in right now. So we use bind get and bind set. That's that's what we used. The problem is that this is one thing and the way that forms work it's a different thing. Because in forms, uh, they are rendered once when the form is displayed, but then they are rendered again basically when you do the submit. Then if you have things in on initialized, then well, you have a big problem. Then you have a big problem there because you cannot kind of like do that. So what I think I will do here Okay, binding to select element, it's not what I want. So I think we can refactor this a little bit. Compo binding with component parameters. So let's take a look a little bit in this. Update from child, okay. Child component. Rear event callback. doesn't really help a lot that's the parent <coughs> bind 
here. Okay. But I don't want to bind each property itself, so no, that, that's not something that I would like to do here. Theoretically, obviously, we can do that, but I don't really like it. I think no example in the data in, in the binding part is actually related to a form. And then the problem is that in the form documentation, they tell you to use it exactly like how I used it, but this use case, that's the most common in, in a web application. Kind of like you have a form, be populated with some data, you need to kind of like, I don't know, change it and simply click save and do something about that. So that, that's the most basic thing in a web application that you could do. So what's, I, I don't really understand and I don't really get. It. So let's change this a little bit uh, because I have an idea of how to work this around. So what I would like to have here is the supply parameter from form. And this parameter, even if we have this, if we have the parent component to pass in a personal details update. We would still need the own initialize to kind of like say that hey this what's coming from the parent needs to be here. So I don't really see a solution on how we can do this because if you need to if if you need to display on a form some existing data, it's either that you take it from a database or that you get it from from a parent component, it simply doesn't work. How, how about on parameters set async? That's a lifecycle method. If if on initialize gets Called, then also the on parameter set will get called or set initially input as null and check if input equals null then create it let's try it with the on parameter set async but it's still a lifecycle method I would um... override on um, on parameter set we don't need the async here in this case we just simply move this from here into here and just let's remove that one oh, let's place a breakpoint here to see if it gets called twice so i'm assuming it will get called when we render it the first time Here, manage these supply parameters from form attribute new in .NET 8. Yes, yes, it's it's new. So obviously here we 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 stumbled into this, so we continue. So we get this information. You see, it's also called twice. All lifecycle methods will be called twice. Uh, just use to handle form submission, edit form model, example model, on valid submit, handle valid submit. Yeah, that's what I was also used to. But you see that here with this on parameter set we still have the exact same problem. So to be honest, I don't know what... I don't have any idea what to do about this right now. Because it seems I, I don't really have a way to kind of like have a real data binding here for a form, which is a really simple task. And then the problem is that if I make this component to be interactive, then I also need to make the parent component to be interactive because otherwise the on personal info updated callback doesn't simply work. The only other thing I can think is to not make this a form, but if I don't make this a form, then what's the point? Then what's the point? Also, set input should not uh, be null right now. Uh, actually, what we can do here is 
I think this uh, has this bull first render. Is not this one that has the first render? No, it's not this one. There was one. Um, there was one lifecycle method that had some first render. So in that one you can you can define. Let me check here. Uh, Lifecycle events. The problem is that actually since this is totally server rendered, every time that a request comes in, so when you post the form, it's actually so when you post the form is actually always a first render. So you can't do this. Like I have this stuff here. So this gets called first render only like on initialized async or on initialized and on parameter set parent renders okay first render only and on parameter set that should actually not be on the first render but the problem is that when you post the form it's basically a request that comes for for that form and then basically it's a first render once again Yeah, so that's... Let's try with on after render, but I would assume it will have the exact same result. And from a user perspective, that's... not... Um, Not the best thing because theoretically you'll have here one point in time when the, the UI will flicker so it will just create a flickering because it first renders everything with kind of like uh, I don't know what we have on what's the default like personal details in but in this case I guess we'll almost need to have this new On after render is last life central method triggered. Yes, that's that's correct, I guess. Thing is, I don't think it will kind of like change the behavior that we have. So now we don't have it at all. So the method was not triggered at all. Obviously, the update is student right now has these type of things. And yeah, this was then updated right now. But, where am I here? On after render. Let me, let me close it for now. So this on after render was actually not called at all which is not very nice i found someone who says that it has relation with host CS HTML render mode property we don't have a host CS HTML in the new blazer you don't have that anymore no i mean the breakpoint was not hit it doesn't really has to do anything with if first render or not, this breakpoint was not hit at all. It's at the entrance of the method. So, 
to know, host CSHTML doesn't exist in this Blazor version. You don't have it anymore. Everything is a Razor component right now. What we can do here in this if first render, but uh, I'm 90% sure this will not help us. Because once again, this breakpoint was not hit at all. We didn't even enter this method. was not called and it was not called this on after render was not called at all but why should I try on after render async if everything here is synchronous so I don't have anything async only this one but it's kind of like doesn't really matter So this on after render is basically never never invoked. Hmm. That's strange. So I think that basically this is where we will stop today because really I am not envisioning to find a solution to this one right now. Probably I'll have to investigate this more or in more depth. But I start to hate Blazor more and more unfortunately and that's not a good thing. I was a huge Blazor fan. But I don't know, it's, it's a so very common scenario you don't have it so in the documentation on forms there's nothing about this in the documentation of about data binding it still does pre-rendering enabled by default it's not even pre-rendering it's server rendered so everything is server rendered by default it's just the whole concept of this SSR and we will always hit the uninitialized async twice because we'll hit it when we get the data and we display the component, but when the form is submitted, then, then you hit it again. Then one option would be to make this, um, this form to be, to be rendered interactively, but then also the parent will need to be handled interactively so that I can kind of like work with these callbacks. My approach would be to have input as null on start and put new values on parameter set but inside condition to check if input was null only then I can change input. Okay, and I agree with that but um, like the on parameter set but inside condition to check if input was null only then I can change input. That would definitely be an option, we can try this. But I'm still not sure that would be the way to go. But probably it will work, but it's, it's definitely ugly and I, I can't believe that you need to find so ugly workarounds for problems that are basically so simple. How oh, is it on parameter set? Yes, that is. So let's make this a null. Then.
something like this. Okay. Right, and if we remove the new... Okay, I think I already did that. No, I, I think that there is a possibility for this to work. But, man, that's... That's not okay. So, uh, input is not. So in this case, we obviously set those, which is okay. Now, the only thing would be to say here, if I click here on John, because I think this is also a first render and I expect that right now the input will be null again. No, it's not null. It's not null, so it's okay. Then submit form. But why is it called two times? Now the update was done, so that's correct. So Troll of Crow has also a beer for me if we meet at some point. Uh, by the way, where are you, uh, Troll of? And Mustafa is from Morocco. So yeah, now kind of like it works. But it's ugly. It's very ugly. I, I really don't like this. I don't really like this. Don't really like this. From Croatia, Zagreb, beautiful country, Croatia. At that country I visited a few times, but many years ago. Nice, 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 nice. So we have learned something today, in the hard way. But I hate this, so I really hate that. But thanks for the work for the workaround. Do initialization on, on on after render. Now the problem is with the on after render is that kind of like you saw that it was not called. So that method was actually not invoked at all. So I'm not sure why and but we tried that. And the method we didn't hit the breakpoint. Not even once. So that's why we discarded that. Lucian. We tried that, remember? Just previously. Okay, so what we'll do, what we'll do here, uh, let's try to, okay, we have this student, so input equals new, and then input first name equals uh, student dot uh, first name, and theoretically we can have it uh, Student will not be like this. Input email, but I already have the first name. My dad could pilot wires dumb. Okay, so we have first name, last name, email, need a phone number. Do we need anything else? I don't recall exactly. Date of birth, yes, we need also that one. I think that should be it. Okay, I'm not sure, but Blazor server is uh, in debug mode, will always call uninitialized two times. I've, I've done a video on that. 
because uh, it has by default in .NET 7 it has the uh, pre-rendering mode enabled by default and all server side components are pre-rendered also and that's why it, it, it's called twice um, so yeah I, I'm, I'm aware of that and the, the workaround in that case for Blazor server was to basically sec, set on the host CSHTML the render mode to use pre-render false uh, obviously that solves the problem that uninitialized got called twice but that kind of like uh, brought us back to the problems that we have with search engine optimization and things like that because we can't really get the, the pages so now that we have it like this I assume it should kind of like work do we need to specify a method as post inform? no if you use the edit form <laughs> sorry so if you have the edit form and the on valid submit, you don't have to do that. Now there are a few things that I still want to do here. I want to remove this name form attribute because I want to kind of like try to recreate the most basic scenario that, that would work. Uh, so we have this supply parameter from form. Uh, to the term. And we had the, uh, we have actually the same problem with, with, uh, with the only initialized uh, async call twice also in this new blazer. And there's a video on that, you should definitely look that video up. Uh, because there are scenarios uh, where you have stream rendering, for instance, where that gets called twice. And that's also very, very, very bad. Uh, and I also propose a workaround for, for that. Uh, if, if you go on the channel to the list of the videos, it should be, I don't know, maybe the sixth video. Uh, like, if you go on videos, so or not the most popular, but just videos, they are basically or in descending order of the day they, they were published. And I think it's the sixth video or something like that. Um, yeah. So right now uh, I remove that. Uh, let's also remove the enhance. I want to see if everything should work with the default setup that we would have with any form. We have all the forms here, then on parameters set and the input. So we know that these breakpoints now are hit, so we don't we don't want to hit them anymore. We just want to see it working. Uh, where was the other breakpoint? I don't know. Here. We'll see. DB factory is coped. Um, no, that's a different topic, but it's still important one. Uh, that's different. L let me just, I will give you the, just give me one second. I will give you the link. I will give you the exact link to the video. I will give you the exact link of the video. I know, I, th I think I, I, I have had the more clickbaity title for that. Uh, so probably, I think this is one. This one is it. I think it's this one. So yeah, you should definitely watch this. And I also did a, a video on the on the fact that we still need to use DB context factory um, in the methods. For instance, if we have this as render mode, doesn't matter if, if a, a render mode interactive server and you do something in the component in the submit or something that kind of like has something to do with the database then uh, you should use db context factory in that case either in the handler or wherever you use it but this is also another downside here that we need to always be careful to understand okay where exactly uh, do i use the db context or is this method called with a db uh, uh, in an interactive component or not so yeah uh, I, i'm glad that it helped you i'm really glad that it helped you so let's test this out again and I assume that now it will be working, but man, I think this is ugly. So this is, I don't know, ugly, very ugly from my point. And the documentation is clearly lacking, like for the most common scenario that you might have, like two-way binding in forms, in the documentation about forms is nothing mentioned that it has changed and it will not work and that you have to find weird workaround. So that is really, really, really bad. We have, let's try to change all the fields here. John, uh, code wrinkles, email at example.com. Let's add here a year, uh, 2007. 
let's add here a month that would be I don't know, 0, 05 and let's have here no, 11 and let's have here some random numbers and save update uh, okay but i assume the update should be okay right now yep it should be continue so everything was updated so right now it works do you generally use ssr with form submission so anup i think it depends on what generally means so i, I think i mentioned at the beginning of, of this series of live streams is that obviously i haven't used the new blazor ssr in production applications so one of the goals of this live stream is you is to actually get familiar myself also with the new blazor and what what problems you might find down the way like for instance this one with the forms um so my idea would be thank you very much mustafa for uh for for watching and for for your very valuable input that you had that that was actually great and thank you very much for that so coming back to the idea is that yeah uh, i just want to find out okay what what hidden uh let's say treasures in apostrophes will we find when we try to work with blazer on a kind of like demo application but it's kind of like mimics implements the most of the things that you would use in in certain applications until now i have found some problems with uh the stream rendering and how the own initialize method gets you know, gets called twice which is bad once again and you need to work around with that which is already from from my point of view a red flag and then here this, this is the second one which is this with the forms that's from my from my point of view as bad as it gets and the documentation is really poor at this point so basically the documentation doesn't offer you any valuable information about how you should do this so definitely this will be a topic for the next video i think probably the next video will be about this and then about authentication so definitely but if you still have other ideas that that, that we can uh, achieve the same behavior that we have now actually now that i see things uh, I, I just want to get rid of all this stuff here. So I don't want to have a bind get and a bind set. I don't want I don't want to have this anymore. But still, we we saw we saw from the other properties that it works, and on the other properties we didn't have that. Um, we didn't have that. Uh, let's say input in like this. No, that's not okay. Okay, then let's let's just keep the warning. So all the other properties still work and then we didn't ha have the bind get and the bind set so that's that's definitely something will you plan to include mass transit in some of your next courses a few parts maybe it would be really great um i think it would be a good idea but as i said one of the things that i like to do is i just do videos and use things that based on things that that i have actually used in production with and mass transit i haven't used in production in any application for now a uh, blazer concept was changed a lot inside dotnet 8 that's true and i was excited about this concept of having ssr that kind of like theoretically solved a lot of problems and made it faster but but i am not afraid that microsoft will not fix uh, or update documentation in the near future i'm not sure about this yet yeah, the update of the documentation i don't know maybe 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 i can even create a certain point of um, a pull request for that because everything goes via github but at least for the next two weeks i I've, i'll for sure not do this because i will have a vacation uh yeah form submission looks messy it is messy it it, it is totally messy it's it's really messy so i i think messier it, it doesn't get messier than this uh like all other ssr frame, frameworks that i have used so far like angular universal and next.js Man, they don't have these problems. So I have this video with, with the next Jazz versus Blazor. I, I, I think I need to make a, a remake on it. And I think probably the, there were some points where where objectively I think that Blazor is definitely better than the next Jazz. But man, with this one, the score will get pretty much close to even, I guess. The general score between next Jazz and Blazor will pretty much go, go to be even no it's it's definitely messy i i hate that so i hate it i totally hate it
Good. Okay, so we unfortunately lost a lot of time today with the, with this setback that we had with this kind of like change in the way that forms and two-way binding in forms works uh, in the new blazer. So I'm sorry for that. But on the other hand, I think it was a good opportunity for us all to actually learn something about it, including myself. And probably this will translate also into a video uh, in, in the, the coming days, because that's really, really, really an important thing here to, to play around with. So... Thank you all very, very much for attending. Thank you very much for being active in the chat and contributing with some very valuable feedback. I totally appreciate that. And that's the primary reason why I like to do live streams, to see discussions like this, to see input like this, to see also discussions between you. That's really, really very, very, how should I say it? Uh, but it kind of like gives me a lot of joy. So I will definitely continue to do this live streams, but as those of you who are from the beginning in this live stream today know that for the next two weeks we will not have a live stream because i will be on vacation so we will have a break i think two weeks break but i will announce basically so stay tuned on the channel make sure that you subscribe to the channel because i usually announce also in the com in the community tab when i have a, a new live stream i usually also schedule it a few days in advance if you are subscribed to the channel you will get the the notification about the schedule that it that i will go live so uh, make sure to to be subscribed if you are not already that's uh, that's kind of like very very important and anup enjoy your vacation thank you very much i hope i will uh enjoy the vacation thank you trollov and marco i was great keep it up the good work thank you very much i i really appreciate that feedback and thank you very much all of you for being part of this live stream Really, until the next time we catch up with each other in quite some time from now, uh, stay safe, keep coding, be happy, and uh, yeah, let's meet in two weeks from now. So have a great day. Bye.